Okay, it's live now. Yes, Abha, it's all yours. Yeah, okay. Hello, 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 everyone. Today we have with us uh, an amazing artist, Ekta, and we are going to learn more about Ekta and her artwork and the, the story behind how she's established her company called Story Beyond Lines to engage with people and encourage people to connect to their um, inner self. I'm really impressed by her story and we are really grateful to this platform, Inspiring Indian Women, to be bringing these amazing stories to us. So today, uh, I'll just briefly talk about Ekta. Ekta is a self-taught artist and she has had deep inclination towards arts since her childhood and she has been creating artwork for more than a decade. With over 10 years of experience in the corporate world, Ekta soon realized that she wanted to bring the world, bring to the world the art that would make someone feel connected to his spiritual energy. And therefore her passion for mandala art grew and she took to her calling by bringing forth this artwork and sharing it with the world uh, through various platforms. She teaches it, she uh, does community work with it, and she is bringing peace to so many people every single day. Uh, I would encourage Ekta to talk more about herself. Um, uh, and uh, Ekta, would you share a little more how you got started on this journey? Yeah. Hi, Abha, and good evening, uh, good afternoon everyone to the wonderful, lovely people who are joining us uh, live on Facebook and on Zoom. Uh, uh, firstly, of course, this is a lovely medium uh, by IIW uh, where they encourage and we have these different uh, talks and you know we sort of empower each other. And thanks Abha for the lovely introduction that you made uh, about me. Uh, just to give a quick uh, background to the audience. Uh, so I, uh, uh, I come from a corporate world. I have been over more than a decade in the hardcore corporate finance uh, field. But uh, at the same time, I used to pursue art as my passion, my hobby, which was something which came very naturally to me over the uh, since my childhood. And I found it as a medium to express uh, my emotions, my creativity. And, you know, I loved playing with different colors, different... Uh, landscapes, patterns, et cetera, et cetera. Now with the COVID and, you know, how things were uh, when we were in the lockdown phase, I took up uh, mandala art. Mandala art, uh, mandala in uh, Sanskrit means mandal, which is essentially means the whole universe. It represents the whole universe. So it's uh, basically an ancient art form, which was prevalent in the our Hindu culture, the Buddhist culture, and especially followed by the uh, Tibetans in the monasteries and, you know, as a practice of, uh, you know, self uh, healing and transformation. So in the COVID times, I took up uh, this beautiful mandala art and uh, it sort of really helped me anchor uh, my inner energy. It really helped me, you know, stay calm, stay focused. And uh, of course, navigate through those times. But then I soon realized that, you know, I wanted to bring this uh, beautiful art form to different people across to varied audiences so that, you know, they can use this as a medium to connect to their uh, inner energy and, you know, uh, use this to heal and transform. So that's a bit about my journey and, you know, how I then started uh, pursuing as a full-time thing. So I then found founded a story beyond lines, which is under the brand name, which I uh, do my art workshops, my art events. And uh, last year I got an opportunity to do uh, a mandala art exhibition at the Indian High Commission in London, where I also alongside, I held a workshop. So the whole success of it gave me that whole push and, you know, that sort of, that upliftment that, he, okay, yes, I am in the right direction. And, you know, people were willing to sort of learn this, embrace it. And, you know, they were getting inspired by it. So hence, you know, it sort of gave me that little uh, push that, okay, yes, this is what is, you know, I need to uh, do for people and, you know, bring forward to different audiences all across. 
That's that's such an amazing and inspiring story. How you know you started pursuing your passion more and more uh, full time, and definitely you know we all need a bit of a pat on the back sometimes to kind of say that yeah we are headed in the right direction and feel connected to what we are doing. How has the transition been for you, like you know from corporate world to going into running your own business as a woman, uh, as a woman in this um, country, especially you know how has it been for you this journey? uh well uh to be very honest it's slightly tough it's not easy of course because a when you're in the corporate field uh, you know you are in a very safe zone in a secure mm-hmm. zone it's like okay you're working 9 to 6 9 to 7 uh you know you are in that uh, web that okay you know that there's a certainty that in the sense that you know um you, there's a set pattern of work that you're doing, you know, you're being uh, promoted and you're being, you know, sort of rewarded, you know, things like that. Of course, of all of this comes with a price at its own, but, you know, you're always, you, you're in a, in, a, in a comfort zone, I would say. But then, you know, when you're moving out and you're running your own business, especially where, you know, you're following your passion. It, there are challenges on the way because you know sometimes people uh it's not easy to reach out to different people sometimes people see say though oh no this is not what i want to do or i'm not an artist or how do i do you know you you get, get these kind of ch- hurdles around so it's like you know there's a constant uh way that you know you need to evolve you need to kind of bring forward to people and you know sort of provide your offering in a different different manner and hence you know that's how you sort of then run your own business like an end-to-end way so you're you're like running right from scratch doing all the basics and then you know you're doing everything else around it and at the same time you know you want to inspire people you want to sort of make them aware you want to you know just not do it uh, something uh, out of say a monetary or a reward purpose or you know, sort of, an, uh, that sort of a mechanism. So, of course, you know, there's or, uh, a big shift. Uh, but then, you know, at the end of the day, I feel very uh, inspired. I, I, I feel very rewarded. And I feel very happy that, you know, what mm-hmm. I did today, you know, it's something that I love and I, you know, sort of have, I'm passionate about. And uh, even though there are baby steps at times, even though there are hurdles, even though there are challenges, but then, you know, it's it's something that really then pushes you to do more and more better and more and more ways that, you know, you can bring forward the artwork to different uh, people in a different way. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Ekta. I think a lot of women uh, do go through that journey and, you know, to be able to pursue your passion is not easy, but at the same time, you know, it's it's what drives at the end of the day, as you talked about, is the satisfaction and the fulfillment that you feel that you're making yeah. a difference to other people's lives. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and you mentioned a little bit about mandala art, that um, it is an ancient Buddhist art. Uh, is, is there, uh, you know, are there uh, levels in uh, in terms of achieving uh, different, um, uh, uh, you know, levels within the art form? Or how do you understand, you know, if for a lay person like me, how would I understand mandala as an art form? Uh, so basically, there are no uh, levels per se. As I said, you know, it's uh, open for all, you know, and that's the b- whole beauty of this form of an art that, you know, uh, it, uh, it's not like you need to have sort of a artistic hand or a creative hand or, you know, that sort of a, me- a bent of mind that you, if you want to do, pursue something like an art form. Now, this uh, art is something that, you know, where we are working with different patterns and we are repeating certain patterns now the idea is when you're repeating certain patterns or when you're drawing certain patterns which is on a repetitive circular phase it impacts your neurology and your system in such a way that it really calms your nervous system so how when one sits in a meditation for uh, practice like if you're sitting mm-hmm. in meditation for about 20 minutes or 15 minutes in a day you feel that okay you know you 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 feel relaxed. You feel calm at the end of fifteen minute, twenty minute, while sitting in a meditation po- uh, posture. Same is what a mandala art uh, practice does. So it's like even if a ten minute, fifteen minute practice, because you're repeating certain patterns, and of mm-hmm. course with time, you know, you sort of work with different patterns. You work with different shapes, and you progress. Mm-hmm. But it's it's like you know, 
if you keep uh, practicing it on a regular basis, you'll see the difference that how, mm -hmm. you know, you've progressed in a certain way of creating a mandala and each mandala represents who you are. Again, that's mm -hmm. the beauty of it. So, you know, uh, you may have a different, uh, if you and I are made to draw a same pattern and given the fact that if suppose you and I don't have an artistic hand, we both will, you know, create a mandala as per what your personality is and I would create as per what my personality. So it reflects our own personality. And, mm -hmm. and hence that's the whole beauty of this form of art because it, you know, you're, you're repeating certain patterns and there's nothing, no, no level as such. It's just that how you progress, like how in a meditation practice you progress with time when six months, one year time, you see that difference. It's the same with this form of an art. That sounds amazing. I think I, I need to kind of sign up for, for one of your sessions, definitely, because it sounds so interesting to be able, you know, how you mentioned that how every mandala art actually represents you as a person and your personality. So I would love to experience that, actually. Yes. Uh, and uh, what you mentioned about meditation, I think people often find meditation challenging. But then if there is another form, another way of connecting to your uh, inner self and getting that calmness within you, I think that is a beauty that I can see in what you're sharing about this art form, that people people can still find that way of connecting to their inner self without yes. having to worry about, oh, I can't focus, I can't concentrate, I can't keep my eyes closed, I can't do yoga today for X, Y, Z reasons or anything like that. But here you're kind of uh, putting pen to paper or, you know, um, uh, and doing something repeatedly, something simple, I presume, yes, uh, and yes. then kind of uh, kind of doing it over and over again to create get that sense of presence. Um, yes. So it sort amazing. of you know helps you channelize your inner energy. So mm. you know while you're creating and repeating certain pattern, it you know your cha energy gets channelized in a very you know focused way. So mm. at the end, you know it helps you heal also. It helps you you know. Uh, soothe in your emotions so you know and for example you feel very overwhelmed uh, during the day with a lot of things happening in your life like be it work be it at home be it buying of say something even simple like grocery buying you know things like that so we get a lot of overwhelmed at times that oh my god you know there's so many things happening around me so we need that 10 minutes in a day to just anchor ourselves to just channelize our emotions get in that you know in that more zone mm -hmm. that okay you know i'm calm i'm i need to relax so this form of an artwork and this kind of a practice really helps you to you know just sort of anchor yourself you know in a very very um, you know right way mm -hmm. and i think you mentioned when you were talking earlier about uh, helping people get into the present moment in that sense to be able to stay in the present moment and do things from there rather than be stuck up in in you know worrying about something that happened earlier in the day or um, and one more thing I think I wanted to ask could you share an example of how you know somebody who had come to you and how they benefited by using this art form with you so uh, I have a different uh, kids and I mean I, I teach right from kids about seven plus age so with kids mm -hmm. they help you know and help in improving their concentration focus right at the early age but uh, it's very popular amongst the adults as well, like someone who is like 60, 70 plus. So I have few, you know, focus groups that I do where, mm -hmm. you know, the adults, uh, I uh, people who are very, very emotionally overwhelmed, you know, they're going through some rough phases in their life on an emotional side because they're not being able to cope up with certain elements in their lives. So, uh, you know, when they are, they, they, they pursue this art, they've taken up this art and they, if, you know, I give them weekly assignments, they do this on a weekly basis. So they, they feel that, you know, you know, they are able to better cope up with those uh, challenges that they have on an emotional level. Mm -hmm. And it's actually sort of benefited them because, you know, I have another, another lady who does, she has been going through a lot of emotional upheaval in, in her life. Uh, uh, on a personal space because of her you know on, on her family life uh, but then you know she sort of and she couldn't even sit for meditation because she had that sort of a very um, nature wise you know mm -hmm. yeah so she said you know I can't sit for meditation I can't even go for a one hour yoga class or you know pilates or even in the gym I feel like you know in, uh, that other things so once she's started doing this you know she, uh, on a regular basis on a weekly basis because you know you're playing with pen and paper 
you're focusing on certain patterns, you're repeating certain patterns. So she sort of really, it helped her calm her energy and it gave her a better uh, way to cope up with the kind of challenges that she was facing. So it's essentially the bottom line is, you know, it helps you better cope up with, you know, the challenges or any other uh, nitty gritties that you have in your personal space or any other life. I mean, you know, be it in your corporate world, work life, business life, any other things. It helps you sort of channelize your energy in a better fashion. Mm -hmm. So you are able to, you know, sort of anchor yourself, use um, your better thought process, see things from a different perspective, and then, you know, sort of take decisions in the right manner. Mm -hmm. It sounds very empowering as you're talking about it, uh, definitely, you know, from that it's helping people, children, as well as grown-ups in different age groups to help them stay connected to the present moment and calm down so yeah. that they can continue to perform uh, whatever they need to do in uh, going forward. Uh, one question I think uh, uh, anybody who's a novice would, would be concerned about is, is it a difficult art form to learn and what kind of challenges do we people usually face if they are kind of coming to you for learning about or you know learning mandala art well it's not at all uh, difficult mm -hmm. trust me it is not at all difficult because as i said uh, and i can say it very confidently because there have been uh, people uh, uh, from different age groups in fact there's been like 80 plus uh, people 80 plus who've never held like a art pen or a brush or a paper they were, were really happy to see what they could achieve out of uh, creating a mandala so hence you know uh, i would like to say it's just not difficult at all it's just the uh you know the the, uh, the passion and the enthusiasm if you have that thing that okay i want to pick up a pen and a paper that's it once that's you've it. taken that step you, you know, it, it's like, you know, you, you're in the right hands and, you know, you've been guided. You, of course, you know, you can uh, see uh, what you've been making because here yeah, the whole process is, uh, the whole thing is you're enjoying the process. So it's like, you know, you're not like worrying about the end result. Oh my God, you know, I need to create like a nice picture and a nice painting or a nice uh, beautiful thing. It, ultimately, it turns out to be beautiful. As I said, it's because it's a representation of who you are, but then it's, it's, it's just you soak into that process and you just soak into that whole uh, feeling that, okay, you know, you're creating something. That's it. That's it mm -hmm. about it is what the whole, uh, you know, making this art form is all about. Um, I uh, I don't know if you have something ready for us to see. Is there something that you can show us, show our audiences? Yeah, I have, I have kept something. So this is oh, like a, a re regular mandala. Mm hmm if you can see. So this is something, you know, as you can see, this is like an inner circle mm -hmm. and you're making certain patterns which are like repetitive. Mm -hmm. So if the audiences can see that, you know, they, this is what, you know, how it looks like. And of course, um, maybe it looks really complicated. It looks like, oh my God, you know, how will I create? How will I do? But there are different steps as you keep learning how to create this. It's, it's very simple. If you just try it once or twice, you'll get to know okay yes I can make it and I can do it on my own so it's not like something that you know uh, oh my god it's so difficult and nothing like that and to sometimes make it fun and you know I add certain elements around it so it's like see if, have, if I'm adding like a Buddha oh, that's then you have so a mandala beautiful. around it mm. so, you know these are like fun elements around it mm. so you, you're just not making like a plain circular thing you're adding certain elements so it's not just like a boring art form. But if, if someone might perceive, oh my God, it's got to be so boring. It's there's some fun elements. You do something, you play with some colors as well. So, you know, you're doing some color uh, lines in it. So again, the color therapy helps you. So mm. That really so. looks exquisite, you know, adding that element of um, form. But um, uh, do you use some sort of, um, you know, instruments or tools to get the round shapes and... Is there some tools that you use specifically? Yeah, so it's basic uh, school days geometry box that we okay. had, the compass and the protractor. Okay. So it's base. So you know those are the tools that we use to just draw the circles. So it's like the old school days when we used to uh, work with uh, in our maths uh, mathematics uh, sessions of compass and, and geometry and 
and how about the buddha how will i get that <laughs> no it, it, don't worry the, even the buddha and all is really easy to draw it's okay. that the hence you know i don't draw it something which is too complicated for anyone to uh, understand okay. it's just like you you drawing so I, i'll tell, i'll show you another one which you might feel so i i made an o oh, beautiful mm. so you just even you know if symbols you you are attracted to symbols for example okay. so you just write an om which is mm. very simple yeah you color the om and you draw mandala around wow so it doesn't even have to be a complete circle it's something that you want to create for your own yeah. sense of um well-being and understanding how you want to represent your yes. your emotions on paper in a way yes so it's it's exactly you're right abha that you know it's it's not uh, completely needs to be like a whole circle with com- too much of complex patterns and too much of coloring and all of that but if you're connecting with certain uh, symbols around you or you know certain figures around you so very small tiny shapes you know this mm-hmm. one i'll show you it's just like an ocean wave so if oh, you are like no. so here mm-hmm. you don't need to be like you know i have like draw a sea or a, you know a simple draw a tree if you, mm-hmm. if you feel like you know draw a tree and then you know make a mandala around it so it's like you're combining different elements just to make it a little more uh beautiful appreciative one a little more fun around it so it's like you know you're just not bogged up doing something really okay i'm doing something very really complicated or heavy or some things like that so and do you do you need to use any specific specific kind of pencil to draw this yeah so pencil eraser is the regular one that again the same but the art pen usually i i would recommend you know we use like a, a nib pens which are smudge proof so okay. uh, you know sort of it gives a little easy to move around yes. and you know you can flow with your hands and it's they are usually the smudge proof pens that come in mm-hmm. the art mm-hmm. pens that really would help you move your hands in a way smooth fashion but otherwise also even if uh, people for them if you don't have any tools or any any other you know art pens around your with you just use like a micro tip pen or a you know ball pen which is like we can start with that and i and at least i would encourage people to at least start with something and then mm-hmm. of course you know they will only get inspired to sort of uh, pursue it and do it in a uh, more artistic. technical artistic and technical using technical stuff that so that they can get better results yes for their product okay yeah. and tell tell us a little more about story beyond uh, beyond, beyond lines you know the name and how did you come about the name and uh what are, what are what is your vision for your business in that sense you know uh so i started story beyond lines uh, almost uh, four years back like uh, post covid uh, so it uh, it started off and because i i started my journey with mandala art and every uh, circle and the uh, pattern that uh, is created in a mandala there's a story behind it it reflects your inner story is what i sort of uh, feel and is what it is so it's like even the patterns that are created around the buddha mm-hmm. every every line every pattern has a story has a meaning behind it of course it is a little deep and a spiritual uh, thing which of uh, people will understand if you're like pursuing it for a longer time but uh, uh, for someone who is just new into it i don't want to you know sort of scare them around but <laughs> it's just you know every uh, in in a nutshell every line every pattern uh, reflects a story which is your story and your inner story and hence you know i came up with the idea of story beyond lines so mm. it's something that you know uh, because i wanted to sort of pursue this and bring forward this art so th- which helps someone to connect to his or her own spiritual energy or the innermost energy mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. helps you understand as to who you are as a person so gradually you know as you unfold you create to do something creative something meditative the mm-hmm. ultimate goal is you'll understand who you are on a very spiritual level on a in deeper level and helps you navigate through the life challenges or the through the life in a way way a better way mm-hmm. So thank hence you, I you. came up with this idea. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a very unique name, and it I can see what you you what you mean by it as well. Story story beyond lines. Um, 
actually i was going to ask you how do you get people to the spiritual level but i completely understand they need to sign up for that uh because i i guess you know um those are things that come as you said once they have started the process once they start feeling connected to the process then they can go beyond a certain um you know perceived way of doing things and then get connected to the spiritual energy so uh, i would definitely encourage whoever is listening to kind of sign up for a class to understand um where, what they can really achieve with it and what it is all about um in terms of um, you know if people want to work with you is there a certain time period like you know i know you offer one off classes uh, for for trial but what else do you offer so that people can con- get connected and learn this art to um, you know stay connected with themselves more and more so i uh, you know i offer uh, different kind of workshops if someone for people who just want to do it for a one time thing so i have mm-hmm. those one time one off workshops for the uh, for people who just want to learn something like a you know come and go and you know that's about it so those are my one off workshops that people can enroll which are like uh, held weekly basis which are both online and offline but uh, apart from that uh, you know i have these regular batches which are like a series of workshops where you i i sort of teach from the scratch i i sort of give home assignments and you know so people can learn the whole process end to end so that mm-hmm. at the end of it you know even if they want to sort of start creating or making a mandala art or any art form of their own they are very well equipped to do that so that's mm-hmm. like a series of uh, workshops which are of just three three sessions uh, so okay. it's not like uh, you know whole six month or something but yeah you know uh, these are the sessions and then of course uh, uh, apart from that i i uh, do like um, group shows and events and you know because i i really want to reach out to a wider audience so mm-hmm. you know people like corporate uh, events or any other you know private events like people uh, in fact you know group of friends who want to just come together in an afternoon sit together have a nice cup of coffee and instead of just chatting and gossiping they mm-hmm. indulge into this meditative art form so it it really helps you know because it's like you know you you're doing in a community level on a social level so it it gives you that you know that the uh, mm-hmm. social uh, engagement and a you know strong feeling of pride amongst yourself so those are the different kind of events that i do of course i have the community ones which are held like once a month in mm-hmm. uh, west london so people can just drop in you know, sign up and drop in and you know they can uh, get a flavor of how the whole mandala art is and what it is and they can do create something uh, for an hour and you know take back home some thing that they can start pursuing okay. that starts so i think uh, once we uh, finish our conversation we would love for, for you to drop you know your uh, uh, website details and uh, how where people can connect for you with you for your workshop you know maybe a link in in our um, chat so that people can reach out to you uh, directly and um, also just to kind of coming back to you in terms of what has been your greatest you know greatest sense of achievement through this process of establishing this company for you as a as a person you know a story beyond lines and doing what you do what is that one thing that you feel that it has given you that in the last four years uh so the one thing is that you know uh the the that sense of uh, achievement when people when they have pursued this or taken up the art form and you know when they come back and then you know they share their experience that how it has emotionally helped them or they've healed through a certain phase of their life or you know they've sort of really navigated through their uh, you know walk of life by taking up this art form through mm. uh, you know uh, the, the way you know they've sort of pursued it over the course of time so that sort of uh, of you know uh, the feedback and that sort of you know when people come and say that to you it it gives you that sense of you know satisfaction and that fulfillment that okay yes you're doing something you know you're do- doing it uh, uh, to help people in a uh, you know uplift in a certain way so that's mm-hmm. one key thing that really drives me and motivates me to you know sort of uh, constantly uh, yeah take this you know to more and more people and you know thank you for mentioning that ekta because you know being from a healing profession myself i can completely connect to that and i can feel that energy that you feel 
So uh, that's, you know, one of the most beautiful things because as uh, human beings, I think um, after a certain point and um, an age in our life, I think uh, that becomes a huge element in our life, how we are contributing and making difference to other people's lives. And I think Inspiring Indian Women is that platform where I have seen so many women uh, including Rashmi ji and so many other group, you know, women who are come going forth, coming forth together to uh, run these events um, for us, uh, promote each other. You know, all, uh, as they say that, uh, you know, uh, the real women are the ones who adjust each other's crowns, you know, rather yeah. than looking at themselves and kind of promoting themselves. But it's about uh, helping other people progress and prosper and at the same time as as um, while we are running a business, but at the same time, that element of support that we are able to provide to other people through our work is so fulfilling and refreshing. Um, and no wonder you've kind of given up a corporate life or and you know that rat race to do something of your own and create something of your own. How does your family feel about uh, about this uh, you know um, business um, that you're doing and the transition really? Well, uh, it wouldn't have been possible without their support, to be very honest, mm -hmm. especially my husband. So, you know, he has been like the pillar and he's sort of given me that push and encouragement and mm -hmm. uh, anchored me that, okay, even if there are days when, you know, I drift apart and, oh, you know, it comes to you that, oh, am I in the right direction? Am I doing something right? Or, you know, you feel a little overwhelmed, but then, you know, it's it's the family support that, you know, really sort of... Uh, uh, mm -hmm. further encourages and myself and you know take this to you know in a different level and pursue it with my whole heart out so yes that's that's the key I would say but and I'm blessed absolutely. that yeah absolutely uh, and uh, coming back to you know your uh, uh, clients your the people you serve and anybody who's looking to learn uh, mandala art and you know uh, kind of dig deeper into what it is all about and uh, so what are the three things that you feel um people should try it what, what would you suggest the three key things that you feel uh, that this art form brings to people why they should at least give it a try okay the three things is a it's uh, it's about the process it's about the journey so it's not like, you know, you need to be like an expert, experienced or someone with an artistic bent. It's mm -hmm. it's for everyone, right from, as I said, you know, age group of about kids who are like seven plus, I mean, six, seven years old till about 70, 80 years of age. So it, it caters to all age groups. And it's, it's about how someone enjoys the process and soaks into that whole meditative experience. So that's mm -hmm. the first key thing that, you know, it's for all and it's, it's something that helps you in your journey mm -hmm. second is again a key thing that it helps it gives you a sense of way because you're using your creative energy you're channelizing your creative energy in a, in a certain direction it helps you see things in a very different perspective in a way uh, you know uh, you start seeing things in a very very different perspective in different uh, ways that you've never thought of so hence, you know, it helps you again, you know, as I said, navigate the challenges and, you know, better better fashion in, in, in your own day-to-day -day life. So it changes your perspective. That's the second key one. And third and the most important, it helps you live in the moment. So, you know, you're living in the moment, you're living in the present. It helps you in that uh, journey of, you know, self-discovery. You're sort of connecting to your inner self. And... Mm. I think that's the key because the, even in uh, you know, Bhagavad Gita and you know, the scriptures, they tell us and they encourage us constantly that you know, you need to live in the moment, not worry about what has happened in the past or you know think mm -hmm. too much about the future. You keep doing what it is right now. So this process helps you, you know, sort of anchor yourself, live in the moment. Mm. That's amazing. So it's uh, open for all. Uh, anybody can do it uh, you know it's not that easy and then as you mentioned that it helps you change your perspective and sometimes that's all one needs to be able to yes. make sense of things because you know yes. uh, when when we draw you know a kind of a shape from one side it'll appear to be a six but from the other side it'll appear to be yes. a nine so you know that and that changes everything for us yes. so that is so powerful you know to be able to help use our art form to change perspective and think 
through things in a different manner to be able to make sense of them and move forward stronger. Uh, and uh, as I think as we I talk in my um, my own uh, therapy as well as it's about you know um, learning to respond rather than react to situations and that happens only when you're able to change your perspective around things and, um, and so that's okay. so amazing and the third thing you mentioned is being able to live in the present moment and that's um, such a big uh, thing these days because we are uh, kind of you know um, rushing through life almost without realizing uh, you know what we are missing sometimes because we don't have yeah. that uh, moment of pause in our lives we need to be able to kind of take a step back and think about you know um, take things in perspective and uh, be able to connect to the present moment so that we can move forward stronger as you were saying so that's so amazing that you've shared about this art form and and one more particular thing Ekta, I really liked about what you said is um, about working with children because yeah. uh Every other parent these days is complaining about children being hooked onto social media, hooked onto yes. their, uh, you know, mobile devices and stuff. And it, the attention span for children is so low. Yeah, it's and it's the retention is so low. Yes. So have you have you come across any such you know children who have had that transition through working on the mandala art? Or uh, yes. if their parents who have reported this kind of transition to you? Yes, in fact, uh, I have like you know the regular um, you know workshops for the regular you know, kids who are doing regularly who have pursued this on a regular basis, and their parents have seen that you know they've seen the transition of how their kids have started loving this, you know, mm -hmm. because you you're sitting for a one hour session, forty five minute to one hour session, but even you know when they go back home. They sort of, you know, because I play with a lot of colors and all when kids are around. So it's not just plain vanilla, black uh, pen and uh, paper, but uh, mm -hmm. it's more of uh, colors and all that they do. So they are so encouraged because of the home assignments and stuff that they, you know, even at home, instead of, as you rightly said, you know, getting into hooked into some uh, gadgets and mobile mm -hmm. phones, etc. They, you know, sort of have taken up this art form together, you know, and, pursued it and they have seen that sort of improved focus and concentration so even in their regular studies and all they it helps them improve their you know the concentration levels their focused way of doing things so and it it has been uh, sort of medically proven also that you know this sort of uh, repeated patterns and you know, this kind of an art form really helps in improving your concentration level and the focus level uh, if you keep practicing it for a time frame definitely and i can see uh, a lot of uh, you know potential for collaboration with schools and you know maybe other forms of um, group teaching sessions that are held uh, yes. there's so much potential for our children these days and um, i'm really really glad we had this conversation today Ikta. i would yeah, uh, yeah. It, yeah uh, i would invite you to share anything else that you want to add to you know what we have talked about so far and um, please uh, share anything else that you feel pull push you know uh, pulled to share today with our audiences no i i think Abha, we had a lovely chat and a discussion uh this evening and it was a great you know interacting with you and of course sharing it with people and the audience about this art form that i uh you know in pursuing and bringing forward to different audiences across uh we've covered most of the points but yes just on our last note that you know it's and uh, it's just, you know, you're enjoying the process and, you know, working in an art form is not something that you need to have an expert creative bent of mind or creative hands around you. So, mm -hmm. you know, I would encourage people to, you know, even if you don't want to get into a very a formal sort of a setup or, you know, you, you don't want to get into any sort of a formal workshop, I would encourage people to, you know, just pick up a pen and a paper which they would have at their homes. And, you know, just 10 minutes of your day, you can just mm -hmm. every day, 10 minutes, you, you know, create some art form, which is like, mm -hmm. you know, just not scribbling, but, you know, you can just create something, even if it's not making sense to anyone, don't worry. You know, I it, it just, you know, you start somewhere. So even if you're doing something for 10 minutes or on a daily basis, you will see the difference as, you, you know, how it you it has helped you to, you know, sort of 
uh, anchor in a very, very emotional and a mental way. So that's my last word that, you know, uh, I would say people just don't, you know, hes feel hesitant and just don't feel that, you know, it's something that you can't do. Uh, just you need a pen and a paper. And that's yeah. about it. You've taken the first step. Yes. And I think uh, what you've just mentioned uh, in, in the last uh, couple of sentences is about people doing it for themselves. Taking yes. it's, a, it's a form of self-care that they are doing it for themselves. They don't even need to share it with anybody. But even if they get, take out those 10 minutes for themselves, it will be so fulfilling and empowering for them. And yes. that's all that they need. Just a pen and a paper and they can be on their self-healing journey. Uh, and yes, they they can always come to you, reach out to you for uh, guidance in terms of how to kind of create uh, and how to kind of bring their ideas to fruition in a particular yes. format. Uh, and uh, so I would encourage our audiences to reach out to Ekta. We will be sharing her details in the comments section. And, um, and thank you so much, Ekta, today for sharing uh, about your work and your uh, business and uh, this beautiful art form today. And thank you to Inspiring Indian Women. And thank you, Rashmiji, for uh, providing us this platform to be able to share this with a wider audiences. Yes. Thank you, Abha. It was lovely chatting with you and uh, lovely reaching out to uh, the whole audience around and, of course, inspiring Indian women and Rashmiji for giving us all this platform and empowering us in a you know, collective way. So it really, you know, sort of you feel that, you know, you, you're really part of a beautiful community and, yes, you would uh, mm. you feel that sense of pride and fulfillment. Absolutely. So it was lovely chatting with you, Abha, this Saturday evening. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Same here, same here. Thank you so yeah. much, Ekta. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste.